in this um, series of episodes that I plan on running, I decided to just take open source projects that I can find on uh, GitHub, uh, non-trivial ones, like this one here. I found this, uh, this tool here, it's called uh, Shopizer, and I, I liked it because this is an e-commerce application and it provides an API, a backend and a frontend, and I liked it because this is non-trivial. And the idea of uh, this uh, series of episodes that I plan to run is to try to get these uh, examples, these projects, and try to optimize them. And of course, you could do it manually if you want. It's quite, uh, it's quite time consuming, but I have a tool for, uh, for that. It's called Hypersistence Optimizer, and we're going to use this tool to, to and I'm going to show you how, how this one works. And uh, the first thing that I did, I just forked this repository and you can basically, uh, everything that I'm going to show you, it's on GitHub. So I forked this uh, repository. So under my account name, you can find this uh, shop. This is the URL you can, uh, you can use and uh, you will get this, you, you will get access to everything that I'm going to show you. And all the branches, we are going to go from one branch to the other to show you what I've done in order to optimize one thing or the other. So everything is going to be on GitHub. So one of the first thing that I did was basically to just, I downloaded this project and I configured it uh, in IntelliJ uh, IDEA. So this is basically the project. It's very easy. It has a POM XML. So when you import it, you just go file, import from sources, import from Maven, and then you give the POM XML location, and then it's going to import it using the Maven configuration. And uh, you can see here, basically in, in Git, in the Git uh, history, you can see there what, what basically I did. One of the first thing that I did, actually this was the last commit they did. You can see here the username. This is the last commit that was done before I got, I forked the project and I got my own copy. And uh, what basically I did, even before adding Hypersistence Optimizer to detect the issues, I just did some minor things like I amended uh, the git ignore, added some uh, batch files there to simplify the build and running it. Those are not very, very important. There were some things related to the database because this is an application and I could actually run it and, uh, and use the, the, some REST services for it. So I, I basically had to configure how I connect to the database. Uh, I needed, I created in MySQL a user called Shopizer and the database was, but that was pretty much it. Okay, so now we have a project. It has tests, we can run it, but how, how I would approach it if I would have to inspect or if I would have to determine whether it has some issues or not, because this is quite a large project. It has a lot of modules here and it has a lot of classes. It would take some time to, uh, to investigate it uh, by myself. So one of the first things that I do, because I, I created this tool, uh, I'd like to automate the task that I'm doing. And this hypersistence optimizer, what it is, it's basically just a library. It's a library, it's not open source, it's a commercial library. I'm going to show you how you can get it, it's pretty easy. But ultimately, if you want to add it to your project, uh, it's going to be just like any other dependency. You would have to provide the dependency for it and uh, then you are going to get it. Now, because this is not from Maven Central, Normally you would write the dependency there and then Maven would grab it from Maven Central and it would uh, add it to your local Maven uh, repository. But that's not the case because this is commercial. Let me go here. So this is my Maven, my local Maven repository. Let's say that I delete all this. This is the latest version. Currently is 2.6.3. So this is the latest version. There are multiple variations. One is the default, one is for Jakarta persistence, and one is if you're using uh, Java 1.6, the, the old version. So let's say that I'm just basically delete everything from here. So now I, I don't have this latest version, but in my project here, you can see that I'm using this version 2.6.3. You can see that because I deleted 
now uh, even uh, IntelliJ ADI cannot see it because there's no such uh, dependency anymore. So how would you get it? It's pretty easy. Once you have access to, to this tool, basically it's here in Teachable. So once you have access to it, you can just download it. And then let's go here. It's just a pack. We're going to, you can, uh, and here you have, you can install it. You can install it locally. Uh, you have one script for uh, Windows, one for Unix, or if you're using uh, uh, Mac, if you're using Apple products. And let's just run this one for Windows. So let's run this one. I deleted previously. So we have this Maven install. So you just run it and it's going to basically install in your local repository those three uh, three flavors of the library. You will see again, the, are the ones that we previously deleted. This is the one that works with Hibernate from versions 3.3 to Hibernate 5.6. And uh, it covers uh, the vast majority of versions of Hibernate. The, that was the initial one. Uh, now there's also one that is uh, only contains the libraries or or the Hibernate versions that are associated to Java 1.6. Uh, I needed to create this one because some people who are running uh, JBoss uh, with Hibernate 4, if you add classes that are compiled with uh, Java 1.8, the application server will complain. That's why that one was created. And this one, which is Jakarta, is for Hibernate 6. Why it's a new one? It's because, um, you know, when you, when you are going to migrate to Hibernate 6 or to Spring 6, the thing is that both Spring 6 and Hibernate 6 have migrated from uh, Java Persistence to Jakarta Persistence. It's not just uh, Java Persistence, basically from Java E to Jakarta E. So a lot of APIs have changed. So what was previously Javax dot Persistence when you imported the class, now it's Jakarta Persistence. And for that reason, because it's no longer back or the API is no longer back on compatible, it has that flavor. So that's basically it. Once you do that, you have the library. And in our case, we can, uh, we basically edit this uh, uh, library. So we can see here in Git what exactly, I could do this manually, but basically I did all the steps. So we can just navigate, jump from one commit to the other. I'm going to explain exactly what I did. And we are going to run these examples to see exactly what, uh, what would be the benefit of doing all that. So I have at this point, I only have this library, right? But uh, what is going to give me that? Now, one of the first step, which I usually do, is to try to have an integration test where I would detect all these performance issues, where all these performance issues are going to be uh, detected and I could interact with them. So how, how I can do that? I basically, I would need uh, I would need a test case for that. In my in, in, in my case, I called it performance issues test. As, as you can see, when Hypersistence Optimizer will run, it's going to produce some events. All these events are basically what it discovers. And for that, we uh, basically, in the init method there, we are going to get the events. Actually here in this event, uh, here I'm going to just go, go through that. But the configuration uh, is done they are basically it, it it's done here. So how you can configure this? If you're using and this is a very popular uh, tool nowadays to use Spring. If you're using Spring, it's just one bin. So you get the reference to the entity manager factory. So once you have the reference to the entity manager factory, you just give it to Hypersistence Optimizer, and then you have this bin, Hypersistence Optimizer, which you can uh, inject. You can uh, inject in other places. Uh, now I also have. I also have uh, a configuration for the test because one of those performance uh, tests was not bootstrapping the entire context. It has its own context, so I had to create uh, create it twice. So now I have a performance test that can run uh, Hypersistence Optimizer, but we can also run the application and we will also initialize Hypersistence Optimizer if you want to detect runtime uh, events. So let's let's try to run it to see how it works. So we can run this one in debug mode. Now it's going to run. 
and we have several breakpoints uh, that are going to are going to stop the execution so we can see exactly how uh, things work and it's going to take some time because this is quite a large application and it's going to bootstrap quite a lot of uh, stuff there so it's not uh, it's not running very uh, very fast but that's good because it has a lot of things in it so we can we will see that there is when i first tried it i liked it because there were a lot of things that uh, we could optimize so that's good it's good that it takes time because it's not uh, it's not something trivial and that's basically much closer to what you would you would have normally this is when you see that those are the events that are discovered by high persistence optimizer all right so now we can see that uh the breakpoint uh stop the execution and we have here 164 events we have quite a lot of events and we are going to go through all of them Th those events can be categorized by several things some of them are configuration events like settings settings that you are missing or settings that you shouldn't use and those usually typically extend this configuration property event so we can basically we can basically see which are those which are those events so i start i always start with them because it's much simpler so we can see here batch event batch size event we don't we're not using jdbc batching at all the fetch size event we will see that because we're using h2 in this case uh, it uses a, a, a fetch size of 100 which could be increased the schema is automatically generated for that there's not much we can do because we're in an integration test typically you would you would use flyway or something like that it's much better this one it's interesting because the i don't know why it's the case probably because they started a long time ago they are using the uh, old identifier generators and not the new ones which uh, became the default in hibernate uh, in hibernate 5. also there are configurations that are missing the in close parameter padding this one i did myself uh, query pagination with collection fetch this one is nice because it allows you it throws an exception when you're using join fetch with pagination which otherwise hibernate would do it in memory instead of doing it in the database and we're using the default query plan cache size so that probably doesn't tell you much but how how can we we're going to see step by step how we improve all of them but those are just some events like configuration property but there's so much more to it we have like for instance mapping events we also have mapping events and those are a lot of them like 156 related to bidirectional associations we're using eager fetching a lot of eager fetching here many to many lists uh what else i can spot here rapidly one to one without maps id we're going to go through all of them so that's what's nice about it is that this is fully programmatic so once you once uh you are going to fix all of them you could have something like an assert true events is empty so i don't have any issue and when uh when a new uh, event occurs because someone changes something and creates this issue your test will fail and you are going to be notified actually you're you're not going to be able to build the project which is better than shipping something that might have performance issues so at this point we know we have problems but we have to fix it and this is the first episode of this Shopizer e-commerce application performance tuning. In the next episodes, we're going to see how we can fix all these configuration, mapping and runtime issues that were detected by Hypersistence Optimizer.